Darkest night, you can light it up. Oh, you can light it up, God of revival. Let hope arise, death is overcome. You've already won, cause you're the God of revival. In the darkest night. You can light it up, you can light it up, you're the God of revival, let hope, let hope arise, death is overcome, yes. you've already won, you're the God of revival, in the, in the darkest night, you can light it up.
it up, come on. You can light it up. You're the God of revival. Let hope arise. Death is overcome. Here you've already won. You're the God of revival. One more time. In the darkest night, you can light it up. Yeah, you can light it up. You're the God of revival. Let hope arise. Death is overcome. Yeah, you've already won. You're the God of revival. God of Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around and that the spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing. The spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Now the spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love. So is all around now the spirit of the Lord is here we sing it out the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here right now right now the evidence is all around that the spirit of the lord is here overflow overflow in this place fill our hearts with your
captivated by your love It's all we need, you're all we need, you're all we need, Jesus Sing spirit of God fall fresh on us We need your presence Lord, your kingdom come Your will be done Here as in heaven Spirit of God fall fresh on is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here we believe it a miracle can happen now wherever you are for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. Hey church, happy Sunday. What an incredible time of worship with our Celebration Church family. We're so honored that you've worshiped with us this morning in your home for Church at Home. Well, hey, if you're a first time guest here at Celebration Church, whether you're in person at our family lounge with your kids, or maybe you're joining us online from home or on the road vacation, wherever you may be, we wanna say welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us today to worship with us, and we're so excited to get to know you a little bit more. In order for us to get to know you a little bit more, we'd love for you to fill out our Connect card. It's a super easy form that can be found either on our website or our Celebration Church DC app for those joining in online. If you're joining us in the family lounge in person, we'd love for you to stop by our Connect table in the lobby at Kingstown Fill out the Connect card. Our staff will be there. Some of our dream team will be there. And we would love to be able to connect with you. But either way, if you fill out a Connect card, someone from our team here at Celebration Church DC will be ready to connect with you, get to know you a little bit more, and get you plugged into the church life here at Celebration Church. Well, hey, if you haven't gotten a chance to gather with us in person, we would love to be able to see you on our Sunday gatherings at Kingstown Regal Theaters at 9.30 a.m. 
You may have missed this week's service, but there's still time and space to register for next weekend, and we can't wait to see you there. We'll be meeting again at the Kingstown Regal Theaters at 9.30 a.m. You can, e- you can find the registration either on our app or our website. Register, your, re- register and reserve your seats for next week. We can't wait to see you there. Well, another really exciting thing that's happening here at Celebration Church DC is our fall group. Sign up to go live today and groups launch next week. And we're super excited because our primary group for this fall is going to be dinner group. And we're so excited to be meeting every Wednesday in the Kingstown area, different restaurants. There's so many different options. I know I love to go to lunch after church in the Kingstown area and going to dinner on Wednesday nights is gonna be so fun. It's for everybody. So no matter what season of life you find yourself in, whether you're a young adult, young family, maybe you have kids in elementary, middle school, or even you're heading towards retirement, the group is 100% for you. We'll be meeting at different areas and we would love to see you there. And maybe Wednesday nights don't work out for you and that's completely fine. We'll have other groups ready for you, ready to, for you to sign up for on our group's webpage. We can't wait to see you there. Well, now is the portion of our service where we worship with the giving of our tithes and the bringing of our offerings. You know, I was just talking with a friend the other day about working with kids. You know, as a kids director, I'll be honest, sometimes it can be a little frustrating and disheartening to not see the results of your work right away. And that doesn't mean I don't love working with kids. I absolutely love getting to work with young families and kids going throughout elementary school, middle school, but you don't necessarily get to see all the results of your work, maybe the, the values that you're instilling in them, the things that you're teaching them. It takes time for that to grow in kids. It takes time for them to mature. It takes time for them to become the young, productive, young adult that they're going to become. And I've gotten to see that so many times, time and time again, and people that I've been able to watch grow up. You know, I think that a lot of the times I can even look at that as giving. Of You know, we're giving towards other initiatives, whether that's across the globe, whether that's here. And I might not know everybody that I have the ability to impact with my giving, whether that's somewhere in the mission field, whether that's even here in this community, whether it's people maybe in the homeless outreach that I'm, that I'm impacting, or even in the school system as we do outreaches. But that doesn't mean that I'm not having an impact. I believe that one day whenever we step face to face with Jesus and we hear, well done, good and faithful servant, that we're gonna be able to see all the seeds that we planted and the harvest that comes from it. And we're gonna be able to see the impact that we had from sowing into the kingdom of God. So I would just encourage you today, as you prepare your giving, as you prepare your tithe, to bring that forward of just trusting God that I might not be able to see what you're doing right now, but God, I'm gonna trust that you are working through the lives, through this giving, through this avenue of worship that we have to be able to impact the lives for others that we will be able to see on the other side of eternity, that we'll be able to see all the lives that were impacted through giving. Let's go ahead and pray over our giving today. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to impact people through this worship, this avenue of worshiping through our giving. God, through, through worshiping, we're gonna be able to show people what you look like. We're gonna be able to show people your grace, your kindness, your mercy. We're gonna be able to impact people for, the, for your name, for the kingdom. God, I pray that everything that is given today, God, that it would be used to bless others, that it would be able to bless communities, bless other nations, bless people groups that we would have never been able to impact on our own. But God, through the miracle of technology, through the miracle of giving, God, that we're able to impact so many people for your name and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, church, we have an incredible word for you. Get your pen, get your notebook. Let's get ready for the word. Hey, church, Pastor Anthony here. I'm super excited, come on, to bring the word of God to you guys today. Come on, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open it up. Hopefully you got a, got a good writing pen to take some notes today, but I'm, I'm super excited. I, I know you guys, come on, I know you've been enjoying this series in the month of September. Come on, as we just been diving into finding out, come on, what, what is my calling? What is my purpose? As we begin week to week, I'm just loving how God has just been unpacking and diving in and just giving us good application on what it means, what it actually means to be called. We we found out in in week one that it's actually not a, a lot about what I'm called to do, but here it is, family, rather, who am I becoming? Who is God calling me in this season of my life, my calling, my purpose, the things that God wants me to touch and activate, not for for my benefit, but for his kingdom? 
and I'm learning even more that I, if I focus on the, on the who rather than the what, I can actually become what God is calling me to be. And the what will always follow after the who. You don't even have to worry about focusing in on the what because the who, who God called me to do, focus on King Jesus and Jesus will always lead you to the what. Man, this series has just blown my mind. I'm, I'm just getting even closer to just what the Spirit of God is even saying to my life. But I, I love how Pastor Chris even preached about, about the humble heart. That the humble heart will always lead you into the direction that God has called you to do in your life. And even as Pastor Key preached a, a phenomenal message, I, I love it. Come on, somebody, but throw on your boxing gloves because this is something that you have to fight for. And when it comes to your purpose, your calling, and the things that God wants you to go after in your life, we understand that life has its roller coasters. There are going to be some seasons in your life where you're on the mountaintop. There's going to be some seasons in your life when you're, you're actually going through the valley, but, but just because you're in the valley, it doesn't mean that God did not call you. Just because you're in a storm right now, it does not mean that God doesn't have a purpose for your life. Maybe what this is that God is actually building your faith, testing your faith. He's actually giving you more muscles and more strength. And here it is. He's giving you even more confidence to believe in of everything that he has called you. And this is a thing that you got to fight for. But understanding that, come on, we don't wrestle with, with blood, but we actually, this is a spiritual thing. God has called you to do it. And matter of fact, can I remind you that God goes before you? That of everything that he is calling you to do, that purpose, that, that thing that's burning in your stomach right now, God has called you to do it and God has gone before you. He's making a way, he's paving a way right now to the thing that he has called you to. And I, I'm just loving it. If you miss any of those weeks, I'm telling you, take some time out this week. Begin to go back. Be a student. Sit down with the presence of God and let God begin to dive into your life. Begin to unfold, unpack some stuff because God has called all of us. He's called us to be sons and daughters in his kingdom. And our number one priority, hear this family, our number one priority is to serve him. I, that, that's what we were called to be a son and a daughter and a son and a daughter is somebody who's building his father's kingdom and that's what we're going to be talking about today what am I building in this season of my life see, see here, here even at church God, God is calling us he's building his local church and we all play a role when it comes to building and just to ask that question come on pop quiz on a Sunday morning for you what is God calling you to build in this season of your life see your, your calling shall always lead you into the direction that what God has called you to build. And matter of fact, can I say it this way? Please, I even learned this in my life. Don't waste resources and energy and time building something that God did not call you to build. See, focusing in on the who I should become will always lead me to what God is calling me to build. And just because it's uncomfortable does not mean that God didn't call you to build it. But here's the one thing that you got. You got a word from God that God released his word to you. That's all the confirmation that you need to continue to go after the thing that he has called you to build in this season. What are you building I really do believe a lot of times we, we ask that question in January. Come on, that, it's, the, it's the crossover. It's the, it's the new season. It's the new year. And we're, we're writing a vision out, making it plain so we can run. But here's what the Holy Spirit is even saying to us as a church on today. What are you building even in this month right now? To, to actually come back to the very thing, to be, to be invited back to the thing that God has called us to do. So even in this season, what are you building? I, I love this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. It says, it, says, it says, for we are God's fellow workers. I love that real quick. But Pastor Chris, come on. We, 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 we don't work for God. Hear this family. We work with God. For, for we are God's fellow workers. Come on, I, I just want to debunk that theory real quick. God has not called you to work for him. 
But rather, God has called you to work with him. We are co-laborers with God, that God has invited us into this thing to actually build with him. It says you are God's field, God's building. Hit it, hit it. According to the grace of God given to me, here, listen to Paul, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. I love this verse. It says, let each one take care how he builds upon it. Hear that. How are you handling the very resources, the very gifts, the very treasure? I love the three T's that Jesus spoke about. My, my time, my talents, and my treasure. How am I being a steward over the very thing that God has given in me? Am I just using it to build myself up or am I using it to build his kingdom up? Paul is teaching them right now, be very careful with the thing that God has called you to do. Be very careful and use it not for your benefit, but for his benefit. I, I, I remember my high school coach used to say this. Shout out to, to Coach Hayes. I, I remember he used to say this. It's not about the name that's on the back of the jersey, but rather about the logo that's on the side of the helmet. Don't play the sport trying to, try, try, trying to lift your name up, but play the sport with pride, lifting the name up. And what is I'm saying right now? Let us not use our resources to lift the name on the back of your jersey yet, but rather use what God has given you, the seed that's in your life, to lift his banner up, to lift the king of kings up, to continue to spread his gospel so that marriages will be saved, that children will be invited to his presence, that this community will be changed. Let us lift his banner up in one of the ways that we do that. We do that with the seed that's in our hand, the resources, my, my time. Am I generous with my time? Am I generous, generous with my talent? Am I being a generous person with the treasure that God has given me. Why? Because I have a role in his kingdom. I have a role to build with Jesus. I have a role to actually play and build it in his kingdom. And I have to ask myself this question today, and I'm inviting you into this question right now in this season of my life. Am I storing the very thing that God has given me to build for his kingdom? See, even here at Celebration Church, we, 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 have, we, have, we have one thing that we're building, and it's all laid on the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's all through love, that God has called us to love him and love one another. And through that, come on, we are building disciples. We are building people that's going to produce and release the love of God so that the community is going to be changed. Come on, if we're going to build anything, let's build disciples for Jesus Christ. Come on, let's build disciples who can release the word of God. Let's build disciples who can touch and pray. Let's build disciples who can go into the schools, into the community and release the love of God so that this world will be changed. There's something, come on, the hope of the world is through the local church. This is God's church. His, this is God's community. This is God's body. It's birthed it right through the local church. And if we're going to build anything, let's continue to build it's God's church. How am I building God's church. I, I love it in this series that we, we've been unpacking David's life. We, we've been going through in, in each element as we study David's life, we, we always drawn back to his heart. That we understand that David, David himself, from a boy and all the way up to being king, I love it how they always paid attention to David's heart, even being out in the field by himself. You can, you can study the heart of David that the Bible even says that David was a man after God's own heart, that he had a humble heart, that he always wanted to do something for his father, his, his heavenly father, that he always wanted to see, okay, how can I please my father on today? And then we find out that David himself, even in this scripture, in 2 Samuel, as we get ready to dive into, David wanted to do something for his father, for, for God, that he wanted to build 
a house for God to dwell in. And even to get some, some context behind it, I, I love how David had this heart. He had a heart, here it is, he had a heart for God's house because he understood that God already had a heart for his house. Come on, somebody needs to hear that today. Come on, he had a heart to build God's house because he understood that God already had a heart for his house and his family, that God was already moving. And David said, is there anything I can do? Can I at least build a house for you? Is that your posture of your heart today? Knowing that God has already moved in your life, knowing that God has already touched and, and moved and, and pulled you out of darkness and set you into this marvelous light, knowing that God is still moving right now, can we have a heart like David today? Say, God, is there anything I can do to help build your kingdom? So we find ourselves even right here in 2 Samuel, and I, I, I'm going to read it because I, I think it's so fascinating. I, I love this portion of the scripture. I love seeing and just seeing David's heart for God. That, that his heart was beating, that his heart, that he wanted to do something for God, and I love his heart right now. It reads in 2 Samuel, and, and, and it goes, says, Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies. Verse 2, the king said to Nathan the prophet, see now I dwell in a house of cedar. Come on, that, that, that's David. Listen to David. He said in verse 2, the king said to Nathan the prophet, see now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. In verse 3, Nathan said, said to the king, go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Come on, I, and if I can just paint a picture real quick, I, I can imagine, I can imagine David waking up. He's in a royal palace. Here to see, paint this picture in your head. He's in a royal palace. Come on. He wakes up. The, 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 the motorized curtains open up for you. Come on. It's like a coming to America <laughs> type of scene. The, the trumpets are blown. Come on. This is King David we're talking about him. And I can just see, he wakes up one day. He looks around and he's seeing everything that God has been moving in his life. He's seeing the cedar, and I'm going to point that out because I think this is very, I think this is very powerful. He looks around. I think it's powerful that the scripture said cedar, and, and underline that because we're we're going to dive into that in a little bit. But he looks around. He sees cedar all around his palace, and the thought that came to David was, how can I? How do I have all of this cedar? in my life, but I'm not using the cedar to build God's house. That, that the very thing that God has blessed me with, how can I actually use it to build God's house? See, cedar, I told you to underline that. See, cedar was a powerful resource in, during the biblical days. But I love studying cedar, that this wood, even in the Lebanon forest, the wilderness, this was a powerful resource. As you study the scriptures, you can see from, from Genesis all the way through that there was times that, that these powerful figures would find themselves grabbing cedar, this powerful wood, that, that even the cedar, I, I love it because it's so powerful that, that even the cedar, it, it grows in any elevation. That this powerful wood, even in, even in low elevation, down in the valley, this powerful resource can grow in a low valley. That we can even look at the Mediterranean mountains and we can see cedar, this wood, this tree, will, will, will still grow even at high altitude. Look how powerful this resource is. I, somebody needs to receive that word now, even right now, to see the resource that's in my life right now, whether I'm in a mountain or even when I'm in a valley, my resource still grows. 
That this theater, that it doesn't matter the elevation, whether high or low, it still finds its way to multiply. What I'm saying right now, could the resource in your life be like this theater? That the seed that God has given you doesn't matter whether you're in a valley or in a mountain. All if it's just connected to the Father, all if it's just connected underneath his hand, it will still multiply, it will still grow. When we connect it back to the Father, God's hand is on it and it's meant to prosper. I'm speaking to somebody right now. When we give what God has given us back to him, it doesn't matter what season of life we're in. God can touch it. God can speak to it. God can begin to change a direction in your life. Whether you're living in a life where everything is multiplying or whether you're in a season of your life where you're feeling like you're at lack and you're at the end of the road, all I'm telling you right now, when you give it over to God, it doesn't matter the elevation God can still touch it. I, I love this tree that even it has deep roots. It has deep roots. Even the size of its trunk is phenomenal. That it doesn't matter what, what storm may come, that the storms can come. And as they study this phenomenal tree, even when the storms come, this tree can withstand any type of storm that comes its way. It has deep roots. <laughs> It has a, a tree sized trunk that's, that's phenomenal. And I, I love it that even when we study it, as you study the scripture, you can, you even heard about the seed of fragrance. That, that it had, it has such a phenomenal aroma. That even when you study that, it says that people who, who go out into the Lebanon Sea, the forest, that when they return, they don't even have to tell anybody that they went into the forest. The, the, the pleasant aroma will sit on them so heavy that when they go back into the town, people will know where they've been because of the aroma will sit. I, I, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm just praying for my season right now, and I'm praying for your season right now, that when we become generous with God, that our cedar that's in our life, that our cedar will just sit in the hands of God. That, that his aroma, my God, will begin to cover the very thing, the seed that's in your life, the seed that God is asking you to go plant, the very thing that God is telling you to go do with your resources, that calling, that purpose, that, it will, that aroma will come and sit on you. So that when you walk by your family, when you, when you walk by the neighbor, when you, when you walk by your coworker, they will, they will have an understanding. There's something so different about you in this season because God's aroma has just sat on you. Ah, somebody needs to receive God's aroma will just sit on you. See, what's so phenomenal about this cedar tree is, is that it's, it's, it's not so much about the trunk size. It's not so much about, you know, the height, the elevation. It's really all about the foundation. See, see, nothing can grow without a good foundation. If you're looking for something to grow in your life, the first thing we have to focus in on is the foundation. Because if we're looking to plant something, maybe you're in a season right now where God is calling you out to plant, where God is calling you to step out in faith, when God is calling you to do something for his kingdom, don't be so focused on the what, but be focused on the who. How does your foundation look right now? I, I, I remember, if I can take you back, my uncle, who's a master carpenter, I'm telling my, my uncle, and God rest his soul, and to be honest, ho hopefully, well, hopefully my other uncles are watching it, but he's my favorite uncle. I mean, I just, I just had, a, I had a tight connection with, I, I love my uncle Jake. And, and, and to be honest, even thinking right now, I, even as, as a young boy, I, I, I love how my Uncle Jake loved his wife. I, I love how my Uncle Jake loved and raised his kids. I, I love how my Uncle Jake well, was a man of faith, a man of God. He, he served in the local church. Come on, somebody. He was helping to build the local church. Come on. He had a passion for God's house, but he also was a master carpenter. 
My, my, my Uncle Jake can build a house. Only thing he needed, to be honest, was some wood and a hammer. He didn't even need any nails. I, I believe it. He just needed some wood and a hammer. And he was just phenomenal at building things. And I remember even as a teenager, right when I graduated from high school and in that moment between high school and, and college, I, I remember as an intern, as an apprentice, I went on a work site with my Uncle Jake. Come on, I, I was just trying to get some money in my pocket as a teenager. I was just trying to make some money, but I remember going onto the work site and I, I have a newfound respect for construction workers and, and people who work in the sun and, and buildings. I mean, it was hot this summer, 100 degrees and, and we was working, but to be honest, I, I thought I had a pass because I was working with my Uncle Jake. I said, oh, I could just show up here. He, I, I, I'm his nephew. He, he'll take care of me. He, he'll teach me some things. No, when, when, I, when I showed up at 5 o'clock a.m., I remember my Uncle Jay, he looked me in my eyes, and I looked him in his eyes, but maybe my eyes, maybe one eye, because my other eye was still asleep. He hasn't, it really didn't uh, wake up yet. And I remember he looked at me, and he said, are you ready to work? And I, I, I don't even know if I responded. I just know this was another man right now. This, this is not Uncle Jake at the dining room table. This is Master Carpenter Uncle Jake. And Uncle Jake was ready to build. But I, I remember this. That Uncle Jake shared something phenomenal with me, Pastor Chris. And I, I remember this. When it comes to building, he said this. And take this down. Take notes. He said, what's building Everything begins with a thought. From a thought comes a vision. From a vision comes a blueprint. From a blueprint comes a foundation. From a foundation comes a beautiful house. In order to build something beautiful, we first must steward here it is, steward the resources, the material, the thing that God has placed in your hand. See, we can always get easily caught up in the very thing, the house, the structure, the beautiful, the thing that God has called you to build. But what I'm finding out, even with a conversation with my Uncle Jay, sometimes we have to go back to the thoughts. Because if the thought is not correct, if the thought, the frame of my mindset is not correct, the thought can actually mess up the vision the thought can actually mess up the blueprint. The thought can actually mess up where the true foundation is. So now we're trying to build something. We're trying to do something. And even when we're trying to do it for the Lord, if the thought is not right. I love his word that his word says that, that my thoughts are your thoughts. That even before God birthed you, that he had what? He had a, a thought. <sighs> That, that thought is so powerful. What, are, what is your thoughts in this season of your life? That, am I thinking of, are my thoughts lined up with building something that God has called me to do? Or is my thoughts lined up with, how can I do this for my benefit? How, how can I advance myself? I'm telling you, it's, about, it's, it's when we focus rather more on the who than our thoughts begins to line up. And I want to share, I want to share three, three points with you. And, and the first point here is foundation. Foundation. When you're building something, that's the question. What am I building? The first point is foundation. How's my foundation? See, see this cedar that's in my life. Remember we was talking about cedar? David took cedar. Here it is. David. Actually, David. I, I love this story here that even with King David. We understand that David had a son by the name Solomon. And Solomon, here it is, Solomon was actually the one that built the temple that God has called him to build. But here it is, David, his father, was the one who submitted the plans. It was David who had a moment with God. It was, it was David who had a thought, that thought process, that thought process, here it is, led to the vision. That, that vision led to the blueprint, and that blueprint led to the foundation. What is I'm saying here? It led to the foundation all because he had a great thought, and it's all about the foundation. But the cedar, David actually used the cedar that was in his life. 
to give it to Solomon so Solomon can go build a temple. What is I'm saying right now? How's your foundation? See, see, Jesus said it this way. He said it in Matthew 7. He says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall. Why? Because it had been founded on the rock. See, see, let's go back to the thought real quick because we're, we're building something here. And when we get back to the thought, and the very thing that I'm building now, what is it founded on? Is it founded on my principles? Is it founded on my values? Is it founded on my preferences? Or is it actually founded on the rock of Jesus Christ? When you're building something and when you take the cedar that's in your life, please make sure that it's being founded on the rock of Jesus Christ. See, the proper thought leads to a strong foundation. See, even for my marriage, it's my marriage founded on the thoughts of Jesus Christ. It, 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 it's, it's the way that I raise my kids. Is it founded? It is on the thought that what Jesus will want me to raise my kids back to that foundation because the winds will come, the storms will come, but it will not fall. Why? Because of what is founded, founded on. See, I'm finding out even in my life that, yes, you can be sold out for God. And understand that it's his foundation that I must place everything on. But when I take some investigations and I begin to look at different areas of my life, the, the, the mindset, the thought of this and the thought of that can actually be founded on something else. That, 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 yes, I gave my life to Christ, but the values of my marriage are founded on something else. You know, I'm getting ready to step out on faith and, and start this business of everything that God has called me to do. And I'm, I'm just believing God for it. But is that business founded on the foundation of the rock of Jesus? See, we, we have to make sure that we're taking investigation of every single area of our life and make sure that it's founded on the foundation of Jesus, because if it's not founded on the foundation of Jesus, Jesus said it even like this in verse 26 of that. He says, and everyone who hears these words of mine and do not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat up against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. We have to make sure what we're building in this season is not being built on sand, but it's actually being built on, on, on the back and, and in the strong arms of Jesus Christ. Come on, he paid the way for you to go and walk into your calling. Let's make sure that we're actually building it on Jesus because when the storms come, that my resources don't get depleted. Come on, the cedar in my life don't get washed away. Why? Because I placed it on his foundation. And I love it that he's a, even as we go into the, the second point, when you're building something, next is the framing. I remember going on the site with my Uncle Jake as we, the foundation was laid now, we began to move to the framing. And as you know, with, with the framing, of the two by fours, the wood, the cedar, and as he took the wood, he began to frame up the house. Man, it's a beautiful sight to walk into a house that hasn't had drywall on it yet. I mean, as you can see, they're, they're framing it up and they're, they're casting vision. And as you walk through, yes, this is where the kitchen's going to be in. This is where the tub is going to be in. This is where the kid's room is going to be. Come on, I'm, I'm going to look out for the guy. This is where you can put the big screen TV at. Come on, the framing is a beautiful thing. And what I love about the framing, without the proper framing, the amenities can never be added to the house. 
What's out the proper framing? Come on, the bedroom cannot actually be added to the house. Without the proper framing, come on, the basement, the vision that what you think the house should be cannot be added to the house. What is I'm saying for this point number two? That our life of what we're building has everything to do with the framing. See, sometimes even in my life, I, I have to make sure that I frame it right so that my perspective can be clear. Let, 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 me, let me say that again. We have to make sure our past life, in our past, we have to make sure that we frame it correctly because if we frame it wrong, on the wrong frame can lead to a wrong perspective. Even in this season of your life, if we don't frame it correctly and look through the lenses that God has called us to look through, the right framing leads to right perspective. See, without framing, we can never actually see what God is trying to do in our life. See, a, a lot of us, we, 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 we are constantly, we can't build. And I find myself in even in seasons like this. We can easily begin to live in the past when God has called us to build something in this season of our life. See, because now we're trying to go back to the past and, and fix this and correct that and, and maybe take some cedar and, and begin to fix up that and frame that up. But God is saying this, and I heard this even this week that was so powerful, that God, come on, God has not called us to live in the past, but to learn from the past. See, we learn from the past to build in the present. Come on, what you have gone through in the past is actually cedar in your life right now that will cause you to frame it up, frame that right thought up so that you can see and hear and do what God has called you to do. I wrote this down, frame your thoughts, but sometimes we have to reframe our past. And then now we have to pre-frame our future. How are you using a cedar in your life to frame up what God has called you to do? See, see, I, I want to paint this picture because can, can you imagine that the foundation of the house is laid and now you take the wood, the two by four, the cedar, and now, in order for the, the, the lumber, the two by four, to have purpose and value, hear this, it has to be connected to the foundation. And it serves no other purpose to, to drive by a house and see a foundation laid out, but the wood and the cedar and the resources pushed all to the side. It has no purpose over there. The only purpose it has is when it's connected to the foundation. What is I'm saying for your life right now? To that very thing that God has called you to do. We have to make sure our cedar, our resources is connected to the foundation. It serves its only purpose when it's connected to the foundation. And the last point is this. My roof. My roof. How's your roof in this season? It, oh, can I say this? Is your cedar connected to the roof? Hear that? It, it, it's my cedar connected to the roof. When my cedar is connected to the roof, it stays protected. When, 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 I, when I invite God into my life, when I invite God to cover my time, my talent, my treasure, it is protected. I wrote this down, and I love it. I, I want to share this with you as we get ready to close out. It's in 1 Peter 5 and 6. I never really looked at this scripture about being generous with my time, talent, and treasure. And I love it as when I'm building something. Here, look at this. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Look at that word humble. Humble. When we think of humble, we always think of humility. So being, 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 being humility, even in the Hebrew I love that even in the Hebrew, humility means evana. And, and evana is actually means to occupy the space that God has called you to. That's humility. 
to, to, to occupy the space that God has called me. Now look at this, point this back to being generous with your time, talent, and treasure. If I, with humility, if I take and use what God has called me to do with the thing that's in my head through humility, through being humble, if I give it over to God, here's what God is saying. Here's even what Peter is saying right here, that there is a God-given space for the cedar in your life. That through humility and through being humble, when I release it to God, that this right here, this seed that's in my hand, that for everything that God has called me to do, it has a God-giving space right here on earth. That when I give it to God, when God plants it there and God uses it there, here it is, it's a God-given space. So what is God saying here? It will produce. It will grow. It will exalt itself. Why? Because it's under the mighty hand of God. And I'm saying that with you right now. If we remain hum with humility and we remain humble and believing and trusting and knowing that God is leading us into some great thing to build for his kingdom through humility, through with stewardship, through with trusting God, that God is doing something phenomenal right now at his due time. He will exalt you. He will exalt the calling that's in your life. He he will exalt the purpose that's in your life. Please remain humble and submitted to building what God has called you to build. It's all through humility. See, humility leads to promotion. David was promoted not because he was called. Well, I say that David was promoted not because he was already equipped. David was promoted all because of the humility of his heart. See, humility leads to promotion. That purpose, that calling, the cedar that's in your life right now, when we, when we live a life of trusting and putting God first in his due time, he will what? He will exalt it. David was promoted because he was humble. He was humble with the cedar. I begin, I begin this message saying this. What are you building? What are you building? As we begin to, to close it out right now, what are you building? And whatever you're building right now that God has called you to, check the foundation. Check the framing. Check the roof. And understanding that the roof covers the very thing that God has called you to build. And I'm telling you, God has called you to do phenomenal things. God is calling you to actually change the world on his behalf. Come on, God is, is making sure that he's leading you in the right direction. But sometimes we just got to continue to ask ourselves, what am I building? I always believe if we, if we go back to the who, the who will lead us to what we are building. I'm so, I'm so blown away even here at church at Celebration Church. Come on, we, we are building something because God is working with us. As I said in that scripture before, we are co-laborers with God. And I, I love this time of the year. It's what we call heart for the house. It's that to, to, to have a heart for God's house like David did. He had a heart for God's house. Why? Because God had a heart for his I love as we come together as a family, as a community, as we begin to invite each and every one into this space, believing and trusting God as we sow together and we love together. We serve together and we even trust and we build together. It's through this offering that God begins to lead us, invite us into what he's building. And it's through the community that we begin to trust and believe for God. It's what a wonderful thing to have a heart for God's house. And as we always say, I, I want to invite each and every one of you into this space, into this time of what we call the heart for the house offering. And even I always love to say this, as even as as my family even comes to, comes to the table. I love this portion right here. We always say this, pray and ask God. 
Just simply, to, it's not about, I'm going to be transparent, it's not about, hey, hey how can we manipulate or, or how can we add more scriptures? It's not none of that. Here's what I love about the family. We say, you know what? Pray about it. Ask God about it. And then we always say, obey. Pray, listen, obey. How can I and my family participate in and building what God is building in this season. One of the ways that you can do this through what we call heart for the house. I love that even for the remaining of the year, the, the outreaches that we're going to be doing, the communities that's going to be coming together. We always share this language and I'm going to share it with you again. We always say, come on, come, come love with us. Come serve with us. And here it is, come build with us. We are, we are able to do this. Why? Because we dream with God. Let this always be a community that we're always dreaming that our dreams become his dreams. Our thoughts become his thoughts. Our blueprints become his blueprints. Our foundation become his foundation. And if everything that God is building in this season is all led by his spirit, it's all led by his love, let this be a community where disciples are coming forward, proclaiming the good news of God. Why? Because we're sowing into his foundation. And I want to just pray for you as we begin to close this message out. The heart for the heart our offering, it will be open even to the end of this year. This is something that you can just begin to pray about and say, you know what, God, speak. Should me and my family be, you know, invited into this? Should we participate into it? And I believe even through that, God will begin to speak. And as we begin to build something so beautiful that God is leading us into. Can I pray for you? Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. We thank you for what you're doing in this season of the church. Even as your word has gone forth about foundation, the cedar that's in our life right now, our resources, our time, our talent, our treasure. Lord God, we submit them over to you right now. Even as we close out this series on purpose, on calling, we're called by you to help build your kingdom. Sit on us today, Lord God. Begin to speak a heavenly word, even right now, to the one that's even wrestling with that thought right now. We know that you're speaking to them. Guide them. Touch them. Begin to lead them into that direction to come and build with God. We love you so much. Thank you for your presence. You're so awesome. It's in your son Jesus we pray. Come on, somebody shout amen, amen. Well, family, I love you so much. Come on, can't wait to worship with you again. Enjoy your week, family. Love you. Well, church, what an encouraging word today. Maybe you made a decision to follow Jesus or rededicate your life to Jesus today. If so, we would love to connect with you. We have our Connect card on our website and our Celebration T Church DC app. One of our team members would love to be able to connect with you, follow up on what those next steps look like. We're so excited for you. Well, don't forget, we have our virtual prayer room every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We would love to be able to connect with you, pray for our community, pray over any prayer requests that you have, and just start our Sundays on the right foot with prayer, covering our church in prayer as we begin our Sunday gatherings that morning. Well, hey, we would love to be praying for you any way that we can. Let us know. Fill out the Connect card. We love you, church. We can't wait to see you next week.